In the sugarcane fields of western Kenya, farmers complain that falling prices mean they can barely make ends meet. With much of the production coming from small rain-fed plots rather than large irrigated plantations, costs are much higher than Kenya's competitors. Mumia's sugar, which accounts for 30% of Kenyan production, symbolizes much of what is wrong with Kenya's sugar industry. The government, with a 20% stake, injected 500 million shillings into the farm in January, after it lost 2.08 billion shillings in the period July to December, five times bigger than a year earlier. At this factory, in have to do this because of the government has sought to protect the industry since 2003 by limiting imports. But critics say instead of making it more efficient, the protection has fostered mismanagement and smuggling. Kenya produces about 60 tons of cane per hectare, half that of some members of the Eastern and Southern African trade bloc COMESA, such as Zambia and South Africa. Eli Kea, a farmer in the western Mumias region, who tills land his father has worked on since 1972, said the soil needed more fertilizer due to falling productivity. So the, even the tonnage went down, uh, the price pattern also went down, and the, 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 the returns we were get, I was getting as a person, as a farmer, really went down. Kenya consumes about 800,000 tons of sugar a year, while production is about 600,000 tons. The rest is imported, but duty-free imports are capped around 200,000 tons and are deal with Comesa to protect Kenyan producers. At the moment, it's a sour business, but it's a sweet business to the business people. These are the sugar barons. The sugar barons would like to take this advantage. Costs could be brought down possibly to $400 or 36,000 shillings a ton or less if production shifted to irrigated plantations and used new factories. Maybe it's going to go out of to privatize the industry to, to ensure that the production of the cane is cheaper, come out the new varieties, which are already there in no case of doing it, but it's not the question of distribution. Mumias has diversified using molasses to produce ethanol, which has industrial and fuel uses. The company has said it could buy government-owned factories and was considering developing sugar plants using supplies from irrigated plots along the Tana River, which flows to the coast. If successful, the company's plans could point the way forward for the wider industry.